Hi guys, my name is Tom and in this video I wanted to show you a cool collaboration I did with uh, Rubidium from uh, YouTube channel Crimson Engine and Armando from YouTube channel Mondo Bytes. Essentially we wanted to remake a scene from Minority Report where Tom Cruise enters the elevator as an encounter with Colin Farrell. It's this cool long one take scene uh, that Steven Spielberg uh, is kind of famous for doing in a lot of his films. One of the reasons why I wanted to do this, uh, aside from testing a whole bunch of cool gear, was to see whether you could recreate the same kind of look using uh, high end gear, but also uh, taking this super low budget approach. There's still nobody here at the hospital. It's kind of actually dead, I'm surprised. Even the receptionist is gone. That's partially because it's a fake hospital set. This is just one of the many sets that they have at the studio. Here's another set. Now obviously our set doesn't match the set in Minority Report, but then again, doesn't really matter since we're just doing a camera test. Uh, we do have a hallway here and uh, most importantly, we have an elevator set. And that's all I really cared about since it allowed me to have the same sort of staging uh, and also allowed me to kind of play around with the lights and, and achieve a similar kind of look. So for the camera, I used this Canon C200 and I had that uh, mounted on the DJI Ronin 2. Uh, very cool gimbal, but uh, also a very heavy setup. <laughs> Tom's been lifting, you've been lifting weights for uh, six months in preparation for a <laughs> one minute Ronin shot. So to be able to work with the, all that weight for a long time, uh, I had this mounted on the ready rig, which just again takes the weight off your arms and kind of distributes it more to your body. So we got Armando here. Hey. Open out. My rig is going to be a C200 and a Canon EOS R. Now we also had a wireless follow focus and the wireless video system so that uh, the assistant can sort of sit on the side and watch a monitor and he could pull focus uh, as I was you know, walking with the actor. Uh, first, obviously, before I even set up any light, uh, we kind of want to figure out what the staging is, uh, what, you know, where the actors are going to be in, and also the camera in relation to each other. So we kind of just do basic blacking rehearsals, uh, which is kind of what we're doing here. Checking the lighting before we actually do the first take. Key thing is uh, measure your, you know, light levels. What I'm kind of checking is intensity of the our backlight. Although in this case I kind of want to blow out the highlights, but up here I do want to keep it kind of consistent. Up here it gets a little darker, which is okay. And then up here we go to our F stop, basically of F4, and we want to keep that kind of consistent throughout the elevator. And that's how you make sure that this way, especially in a scene where you're walking through it. You have consistent lighting. Even if you're having like an older camera or even if you're shooting on film where your dynamic range isn't that great, you don't have to worry because you can fix the dynamic range by bringing it closer with a light meter. There'll be no power windows, there'll be no division results. <laughs> uh, we'll see, we'll, we'll see. see. <laughs> if anything, we'll do the, what's that, what's the thing called? The new Adobe Oh yeah, content, uh, was it a content aware film? Yeah, be, uh... you'll basically just remove half the scene yeah. for a new actor. <laughs> with Tom Cruise in it. <laughs> uh, the lights that I used in this were all from IntelliTech. Uh, these were all LED lights. Uh, now the first one is this Fresnel light that I set up down the hallway, kind of backlighting the actor as he's walking towards the elevator. This provided a nice sort of a edge light uh, and I really kind of blasted that light and focused it uh, so that it, it ended up overexposing uh, the actor by like three f-stops. So really making sure that it's a very clear, no noticeable kind of an edge light. And that was using the IntelliTech Light Canon Pro, uh, very cool and uh, again, very powerful. Uh, LED Fresnel. Then as the actor's kind of walking towards the elevator, I, I needed to have sort of a light there uh, to kind of fill in and, and also to provide a direction to his kind of the lighting on his face. Because a lot of the light obviously in the hallway was just the ambient in-house lighting that, that was there on the set. And because I wanted that light in the hallway to be semi-soft, I, I didn't want, uh, again, a small focusable light. So I ended up using this IntelliTech light cloth, uh, which is a foldable LED uh, lighting kit and it's kind of cool because these are flexible lights basically on a piece of cloth and this way because we're making a bigger surface area light uh, it provides a softer light that, that is going to blend in a bit better with the uh, in-house ambient lighting. Now inside the elevator we used again an IntelliTech light cloth uh, these are two by two uh, foldable LED lights and we had two of them actually mounted together uh, on this frame that you can also get from IntelliTech. And this thing has a Velcro on the back, so it again allows you to attach the, the cloth there. Uh, and we had all of that mounted to a bunch of C-stents and grip arms, uh, which were actually 
kind of going up over the elevator and uh, the actual stand itself was on the other side of the set. Now the reason why I end up going with eight of these panels uh, inside the elevator is because again I wanted the light to be fairly soft and also knowing that that's pretty much going to be the only light that will be able to hide in that elevator. Uh, we, we didn't have anything else there to fill in, uh, which was also alright because again I, it is kind of a darker, kind of a more intense scene so I did want some, some kind of shadows there, you know, under the chin and under the eyes on the actors but I just didn't want it to be like this very sharp lighting. Uh, again, so we're kind of mimicking that, that look uh, that they had in Mi Minority Report. Now you gotta keep in mind that Minority Report obviously was shot on a film camera and the set was different so the lighting obviously is gonna be slightly different. Once we had the Canon C200 under and, and everything kind of working with our wireless follow focus and, and video system then uh, again, it was easy for me to just kind of grab it and, and quickly adjust the sensitivity of the DJ Ronin and kind of end up getting these kind of fast panning, kind of whipping almost shots where I follow the actor into the elevator. So once everything was ready, uh, this is how the scene looks. <laughs> Actually, no, this is just, just kind of wanted to show you guys how the scene looks once the actors were already in their final clothing and everything and we had the camera movement and everything worked out. But yet, I basically, I had no lights in the scene. So all the lights were actually off. And you can kind of see, without the lighting, I mean, you know, the, the scene obviously doesn't have the right feel. I mean, not to mention it's underexposed, but also it's just, again, it just doesn't look right. So uh, I think the, some of the most important things to keep in mind if you want to end up having just good-looking shots in your, in your videos uh, is uh, in, in order to have really good-looking cinematography, you first have to start with... Well, first, I would say the good-looking set, costumes, all that stuff. Make sure your actors know what they're doing. But but then lighting is a huge thing. So once I end up adding all, all of the lights, this is kind of you know, what we ended up with. Seems I found a flaw. What are you going to do? Possession alone will get you six months. Not to mention your badge. I guess we won't be working together after all. Put the gun down, John. I don't hear a red ball. Now, the next interesting thing I wanted to show you guys is then, just for the hell of it, we end up switching uh, to the Canon EOS R camera and we just put that on um, DJI Ronin S and there was no wireless video system follow focus. It was just literally the camera, you know, because it has really good uh, out of focus, uh, we kind of just put it to face recognition and that was it. And it allowed me to literally go and in one take, I, I think, you know, pretty much the first take right away looked good, but we ended up doing maybe two other takes, I think, after that, and that's it. And we ended up getting a shot that I would say is equally as good, if maybe not even a, you know better than the one that we did with this again much more expensive camera and much more bigger and more elaborate kind of rig with this you know DJI Ronin 2. Uh, and, and again, this is to kind of show you guys that uh, on a big budget film, yes, you go, you're usually going to see bigger camera that shoots raw, uh, you know, better maybe you know again recording codec formats, all that kind of stuff. And but then because of that, you end up having a much bigger gear that you have to kind of basically support gear that you need for that camera. So bigger gimbal, bigger tripods, everything's basically bigger. And then when you have that kind of a setup, then again, there's no way that the camera operator can also pull focus or things like that. So then you need a, you know uh, somebody remotely pulling focus. But in order for the person to do that, you also need a wireless video system. And then again, it just becomes a whole lot more complicated and more expensive and also more time intensive because again, to set up a, a complicated rig like that takes a lot more time. Whereas in this case, uh, we got, again, I think the same quality uh, with a much smaller and a lot more affordable camera and a much smaller gimbal. And the setup time was nothing. I mean, literally, I think it took us maybe five, six minutes to throw the camera under, bounce it, and boom, we were ready to go. So when you guys are working on a budget, I always keep on stressing that, and I'll stress that again. Don't go for, you know, getting the most expensive camera or gimbal or whatever. I would say save that money and put it more towards a good-looking set, like maybe renting a cool location like we had here. Uh, you know, again, getting the right costumes, props, actors, all that stuff. Uh, and and then obviously good lighting equipment. 
Uh, and then I would say the camera and gimbals and all that kind of stuff just go with something that's good, but that's maybe, you know, not this big professional gear you'd see you being used on big budget films, but something that, uh, you know, kind of more consumer kind of level uh, stuff like you see up here. Because in the end, you got to keep in mind that that kind of smaller setup is going to just allow you to work a lot faster and also allow you to work with a much smaller team. So if you guys like my video and you just want to see even more uh, kind of behind the scenes of this and more information, then again, check out Armando and Rubidium's uh, channels and, and check out their videos. I'm going to provide the links to both of those and all the gear that we used in the description of this video. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.